Hello beginning clarinet players. This video is just for you. Today we are learning boot scoot and barn dance and uh, we will focus just on the clarinet part so that you have a video that you can use and a track to play along with that's just your part. Let's get started. Okay, we're going to take a look at measures one through four first. Okay, you're going to start on the letter, the letter G, the note G. Um, you're going to see that there's these little arrows written underneath your notes. Those symbols are called accents. An accent means they want you to accentuate the note or uh, give it a little extra oomph. So whenever you see an accent above or below a note, that just means they want you to give it a little extra something when you play it. So that's what an accent is. Uh, be mindful in measures three and four that we have to count out some rest. And in measure four, you're gonna rest, tap your foot twice, and then rest. Okay, so let's go through measures one through four together. All right, one, two, ready, go. three, four, rest, tap, tap, rest. Okay, that's measures one through four. Let's do it one more time, measures one through four. One, two, ready, go. Rest, two, three, four, rest, tap your foot, rest. Okay, all right, let's look at measures five through 20. Um, and the reason I'm focusing on five through 20 is because if you look at your music, you've got some little dots in the beginning of measure five and at the end of measure 20. Those little dots are called repeats. You've all seen them before. Um, so once you get to measure 20, you have to repeat back to measure five and you've got to start over at measure five again. And then once you've repeated it, then you get to continue on with the rest of the song. So we're gonna go through measures five through 20 together right now. Okay, here we go. One, two, ready, go. through measures five through 20. I'm sorry guys, if you hear a lot of weird squeaky sounds, this room is right under our bedrooms upstairs and people are walking around upstairs. So I know I'm hearing all the squeaky steps. So I apologize if you can hear them. And if you can't hear them, then great, okay. Um, so that got you uh, through measures five through 20 with the repeat. Now we're gonna focus on 21 through 40. So we'll stop just at the end of measure 40 right before you start 41. 
So at 21, you'll notice that we have to tap our foot three times. So this will be my foot a tapping. You gotta clap your hands three times. And then we have two measures of rest. When we have multiple measures of rest, we want to count those in a really specific way to make it easiest for us to know where we're at. So for example, if we have two measures of rest, you're going to say which measure of rest you're in instead of saying the first beat of each measure. So if you're confused by what I just said, let me give you the example. So if we have two measures of rest that get four beats each, we're gonna count them like this. We're gonna count one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. So you'll notice that in the second measure, I used the number two instead of saying one, two, three, four. I said two, two, three, four. That way I knew I was in my second measure of rest. So uh, if you ever have, you know, what if we were, we had eight measures of rest. That's really hard to keep track of if you're just kind of trying to sit there and wait. If you're not actively counting in your head through those measures, it's really hard to figure out where you have to come back in. Um, and you might just have to try and guess because sometimes conductors, directors can't always signal every group when it's time to come back in after long measures of rest, especially if there's something else more complicated going on somewhere else, because truly you should be able to count through your measures of rest and know when to come back in. So for example, if you had eight measures of rest, and let's say we've been sitting there and we're currently at now uh, measure six of our rests, okay? So if I was at measure six and I would still be counting six, two, three, four, seven, two, three, four, eight, two, three, four. So I would know once I've gotten into that measure eight that after that I get to start playing again. And of course I'm not holding my hands up while I'm counting these, you know, actively sitting in my band or orchestra group or wherever I'm playing. Um, I usually, you know, if you're, if you're holding your instrument, now if you only have two measures of rest, you guys, and you're on clarinet, you don't even need to take your instrument out of your mouth. Two measures of rest is not long enough for you to take your instrument out of your mouth and like chillax for a minute. Now, if you have eight measures, 12 measures, 16 measures, sometimes you're gonna have songs that give you a ridiculous amount of rest. Then you can take your instrument out of your mouth. But if you only have like two, I'd say even two to four, not even worth it. Just keep your clarinet in place and just kind of sit there and count in your head. One, two, three, four, two, two. Now I play, okay? All right, so hopefully that makes sense. So let's look at uh, measures 21 through 40. Here we go, measure 21. One, two, ready, go. We tap, 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 clap, clap, clap. Then we rest, two, three, four, two, two. Now we're 25. through 40. Hopefully that all made sense. Uh, there's nothing super tricky in this song, you guys. It's just quarter notes and half notes and whole notes and quarter rests and occasionally multiple measures of rest. And there's no uh, notes in here that you don't know. 
you do have that middle line B flat. And I know sometimes you guys get confused if you're on that lower line B flat or if you're on that middle line B flat. So this is gonna look backwards to you because I'm on selfie mode on my camera, but you'll be able to tell what I mean. In, <laughs> so this is that middle line B flat that I'm talking about, not the one that falls below middle C. So make sure you're playing the appropriate fingerings for that higher B flat, because you'll want to hear that ba, 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 ba. So you want to make, otherwise you'd go ba, 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 and it would sound super weird, right? Okay, let's look at measures 41 through the end. You have accents again, so they want you to accentuate those notes. Then you have two measures of rest, and then we continue on at 45. So we're gonna go all the way through the end. Uh, you'll also notice at the end, you've got some hand clapping, knee slapping, foot tapping, and then we shout, hey. Don't forget, you're gonna tap your foot five times at the end. So you're gonna tap two, three, four, five. Then we rest, then we shout, hey, then we rest. So it'll go tap, 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 rest. Hey, rest. Okay? All right. Uh, 41 to the end. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. Rest. Two, three, four, two. Two, we're at 45. song now so if you're like oh I'm tired pause the video go get a little sippy sippy massage those cheekies because they know when we play these long songs out you know versus just a short song out of your book oh it's tiring isn't it so anyone who tries to say that playing an instrument isn't a workout they've never really learned how to play an instrument huh your lungs get nice and strong, the muscles in your face get nice and strong. Gosh, your your shoulders and upper body and your back and your core have to stay strong to hold your instrument in place, to sit up straight. Um, you know, think about those flute players who are up like this, that shoulder muscles get real, those shoulder muscles get real tired. Um, and again, really that lung strength that you need it's just like building it up like any other athlete would do. You know, when you first start out exercising, you get really out of breath. And the more you do it and the better in shape you get, the easier it is to breathe through those exercises because your lungs get stronger, just like with playing your instrument and the muscles in your face get stronger and the muscles in your body get stronger when you hold that correct posture and position. You should always be sitting up really straight. Should never be hunched over like this, you guys, when you're playing that clarinet, always up nice and straight. And that'll help your muscles 
develop the way they need to to help you hold those positions without getting super tired. So um, we're gonna go through the entire song now. Don't forget to repeat at measure 20. It'll jump back to measure five and then we get to go through the entire song after that. Okay, barn boot scootin' barn dance. I keep wanting to say barn dance, but it's boot scootin' barn dance. This is the clarinet part. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. Rest, two, three, four, rest, tap, tap, rest. We're measure five. to practice boot scoot and barn dance with and uh, the ability to play through the entire song with your part being played out so that it's nice and clear for you so I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you can use it 
uh, to really get good at this song because I have some ideas for us to put this song all together in a cool uh, collab video um, soon. So I'm hoping we can all get this song learned and uh, put it together in a cool uh, collab video. So thank you guys. I hope everyone has a good weekend.